What do you need to know about the biological and biochemical foundations of living systems or the MCAT biology for short section of the MCAT? This is the topic of today's video, so I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about this MCAT section. Hi, I'm Nadine Evans, an admissions associate at BMO Academic Consulting. Make sure you subscribe on whatever social media channel you're watching this from now so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. If you'd like us to help you prepare for the MCAT, click on the link either above or below this video to schedule your free initial consultation. As a quick tip, check out the timestamps in the description of this video to navigate to specific sections of the video that you're interested in. I'll cover an introduction to the MCAT biology section, discuss what this section looks like, and lastly, tell you how you can study for the section. The biology and biochemistry section incorporates concepts taught at university during introductory level biology and chemistry courses, as well as in your first semester biochemistry courses. It will contain approximately 65% introductory biology questions, 5% general chemistry questions, and 5% organic chemistry questions, and finally, 25% of questions relating to first semester biochemistry. Each of these disciplines will be tested in conjunction with your scientific inquiry and reasoning skills. The biology and biochemistry section covers the following fundamental concepts. Biomolecules have unique properties that determine how they contribute to the structure and function of cells and how they participate in the processes necessary to maintain life. That's 55%. Highly organized molecules, cells, and organs interact to carry out the functions of living organisms, 20%. Complex systems of tissue and organs sense the internal and external environments of multicellular organisms and through integrated functioning maintain a stable internal environment with an ever-changing external environment, and that's 25%. Now, according to the AAMC, the biology and biochemistry section of the MCAT also asks you to problem solve by combining your knowledge of foundational concepts with your scientific inquiry and reasoning skills. What does this section look like? So the MCAT biology section is the third out of four sections that you will complete and follows the longest optional break, which is 30 minutes in duration. At this point, you've made it through two demanding MCAT sections and you're halfway done. In this third MCAT section, you will have 95 minutes to answer 59 questions. Out of these 59 questions, 44 are passage-based. So you'll be presented with 10 passages about biology and biochemistry topics, and you will be asked four to seven passage-based questions for each passage. There will also be 15 standalone discrete questions dispersed in between passages. Each question in this section will address one or a few out of the four skills outlined by the AAMC. So that's knowledge of scientific concepts and principles, scientific reasoning and problem solving, reasoning about the design and execution of research, and the data-based and statistical reasoning. So how can you study for the MCAT biology section? First, you need to take an MCAT diagnostic test to find out how much you know today. This will help you create your study schedule so you have a plan for what to work on each day of your studying. To get started with studying, create an outline that breaks down each foundational concept that you will need to review. So rather than just putting down study biology on your to-do list, first break each content area down into manageable goals. So for example, for the foundational concept regarding how highly organized assemblies of molecules, cells, and organs interact to carry out the function of living organisms, start by focusing one study session on a specific content category, such as the life cycle of viruses or the mechanisms governing cell differentiation and specialization. Investigate how each topic relates to cell growth and integration to form larger structures that carry out essential biochemical and physiological functions in the body. Use the AAMC's list of subtopics as a guide and to ensure that there are no gaps in your preparation. After completing each topic by reviewing coursework and reading your textbooks, try to make yourself a practice quiz. Come back to the quiz in two to three days and see how you perform without any study materials. Or you could try creating audio summaries at the end of a study session. Then you could listen to them as you work out or as you commute to school. As you study, these active learning strategies will help to ensure that you are getting the most out of your MCAT review. After you focus the first half of your MCAT preparation on content review, check your progress by taking your next full-length MCAT practice test. Next, you want to switch gears to the practice phase of your MCAT preparation. So in the final months of preparation, at least 70% of your study time should be spent completing MCAT practice questions. The MCAT is a marathon of an exam and the biology and biochemistry section is right in the middle of this marathon. The total seated time for the MCAT is just over seven and a half hours for students that use the optional breaks between sections. 
By the time you get to the biology and biochemistry section of the MCAT, you'll have been in the testing center for at least four hours. This is already longer than even the lengthiest of exams or standardized tests that you've encountered thus far in your academic career, as these exams are typically not longer than three to four hours. So your success on test day depends on your ability to stay focused in preparing for the MCAT, intentionally build up your endurance so that you can remain focused for over seven hours of testing. Work to build your endurance over the course of your months of MCAT preparation by using your study time to build stamina. Work to get comfortable sitting and studying for 95 minutes straight. Gradually work up to studying for four 95 minute periods in a row with short breaks in between, just like on test day. Now, this needs to be a steady process. After all, think about how long it takes to prepare to run a marathon. So this is gonna wrap up another one of our videos. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, like, and leave a comment. If you have any questions that I didn't cover in the video, just let me know in the comment section. How are you feeling about the MCAT biology section of the test in general? If you'd like us to help you prepare for the MCAT, click on the link either above or below this video to schedule your free initial consultation. Thanks for watching, bye for now.